Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, singular tense, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies of the United States and other nations that might be tuning in, this broadcast is dedicated to us. I was out praying, asking Abba, put something in my spirit. And the first thing that came to me, as I was on my face, after I would sought him about several other things, was about the women's hair. To cut or not to cut. To trim or or not to trim, to wear the hair up, on, piled up on top of the head, or to wear the hair down, uh, to wear the hair down to its fullest extent. Um, there's a lot of things to take into consideration about the women's hair. However, the woman of this day and age doesn't feel that that's an important thing. Um, Women feel like they can do anything that they want to with their hair. They can wear it however they want to. After all, it's just hair, isn't it? That's what I had a woman say. She says, well, it's just hair. But where do we stand with the obedience of how Yahweh Almighty, the one who gave us breath, wants us to wear our hair? What to do and what not to do. So let's take it some let's take a look at some scripture verses. Um, there are many women in the world who uh, wear a veil wrapped around their head to cover their hair. Um, I want to get into this that this is not a commandment. We have never found a commandment to cover the head with a piece of cloth. Um, let's look into some verses and see what's going on here. Well, let's start in Jeremiah. I'm going to read several verses here uh, where Yahweh Almighty is speaking to Yisrael and he's speaking to her as a woman. All right. By the way, for those of you that are tuning in for the first time, I am reading from a King James Version. Uh, everywhere I see uppercase L-O-R-D, uppercase G-O-D, and the errors of Jehovah and Jesus I will properly put back into the word that humans have removed the name of Yahweh, the Elohim of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. All right, back to Jeremiah. Yeremiah, Yeremiah who? Can be pronounced either way. 725. All right, again, Yahweh is speaking to Yisrael, through the prophet Jeremiah, Yeremiah, speaking to her as a woman. 725 says, Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. I'm sitting here reading this and thinking in my heart. Um, notice that Yahweh tells the prophet, knowing that the people are not going to listen, tell them anyway. Tell them anyway. In other words, it's like that example that I've given many times prior uh, to this broadcast. That Yahweh sent uh, uh, a prophet and told them that if you see someone in the error of their ways, go warn them of the error of their ways. Because if you don't, their blood is going to be on your head. But if you warn them, their blood is on their own head. Um, the newfangled laws that are they're making nowadays um, <laughs> probably going to get you thrown in prison for warning somebody of their ways because they don't want to know. But here, Yahweh is speaking to Yisrael through Jeremiah, and Yahweh already knows that they're not going to listen to Jeremiah. Because he says in verse 27, Therefore thou shalt speak unto these, thou, excuse me, thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. 
But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyed not the voice of Yahweh their Elohim, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine hair, O Yerushalayim, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places, for Yahweh hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. All right, there's a couple things I want to bring your attention to in these in this these two verses. Yahweh is speaking to Yerushalayim as a woman, and he's upset with her because she is not obeying his word, and he is mad. So he says, cut off your hair. Cut off your hair, O Yerushalayim, and cast it away. Cast your hair away. So what does this word cut mean? This word cut is the Hebrew root word gazaz. Okay? And it means to shear, to mow. <laughs> you women that mow your hair. <laughs> Uh, a shearer or to be cut off to be destroyed all right to destroy your hair cut that's what the word cut means he says cut off thine hair O Yerushalayim he's disgusted with this woman Yerushalayim he's disgusted with her he says cut off your hair you're not obedient you're not submissive all right let's get into what Ezekiel says at another point in time all right, I'm reading from Ezekiel chapter 16. I will read uh, verses 3 first. You can read the in-betweens yourself. And then I'll read verse 7. Okay, Ezekiel 16 and 3 says, And say, Thus saith Yahweh unto Jerusalem. Okay, he's speaking to this woman, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, again. And he says, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother a Hittite. Now he gets down to verse 7, and he says, I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. In other words, Yahweh's favor has turned back to Jerusalem because she is obedient. She is a submissive. She has repented of her whoredoms. She's repented of her sin. She's repented of her rebellion. And he says, I've caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. All right, the definition of this word grown is the Hebrew root word zamach. Zamach. And it means to sprout. Now remember, back in Jeremiah, her hair was cut off and thrown away. It was totally destroyed. And this is what Yahweh did as a rebuke to Israel. He cut off her hair. But now, in Ezekiel, he says, Thine hair has grown. And this means to sprout, to spring, to grow out, um, to grow abundantly or thickly. All right, this word, that's what the word grown means. All right, now, for you women that say, well, in Genesis, Rebecca covered her head. All right, let's see what's going on here in Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 24, 65. All right, it says, talking about Rebecca, For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. All right, let's notice a couple things about this verse right here. And this is the verse that women use as an excuse to wear a cloth something on their head, but they think it's okay to chop off their hair, their glory that Yahweh gave to them. All right, let's look at some, uh, let's look at some words here. All right, and said to the, okay, she says to the servant, she's, uh, and he says, it's my master, therefore she took a veil. Okay, what's a veil? A veil in this particular verse can be a wrapper, a shawl, or a veil, something that covers your head. That's what it says. 
All right, she took some kind of a wrapper or a shawl or something, and it says she covered herself. It does not say that she covered her head. This makes me wonder if it was, um, it, it's leaving it open to me. Um, I could be wrong, but it is leaving it open. It says that she covered herself. Notice she did not have anything on she did not have a veil on her head when she was traveling back with these with this herd of camels to to meet her bridegroom she hadn't covered herself so so i'm wondering now i'm going to confess to you i'm ignorant of certain customs however i do know that there are customs of men there are customs of men that exist in the world where they require their women to wear a head covering, a piece of cloth, all right? But there's no commandment anywhere in the Holy Scriptures that commands a woman to cover her head or her hair with some kind of a cloth. We do find here that she was uncovered whatever she was uncovering, whether it be her head, or maybe she had a, a shawl that she was wrapping around her. Maybe she did have a veil that she put over her head, but she did not have that covering on her head before she saw her husband-to-be. Now, that's one thing I want to bring out right there. All right, the meaning of covered herself means to conceal or hide to clothe, um, to cover or spread over, to be covered, to be clothed, to cover oneself, to clothe oneself. All right. The only other place that you find, other than this place right here, where, where a woman covered herself was in Genesis 38 and 14. And she put her widow's garments off from her, and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is, by the way, to Timnath, for she saw that Shelah was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. And this, of course, this is talking about Tamar. So we see, and I have searched diligently through the Hebrew Scriptures, that there is no commandment for a woman to cover her head or her hair anywhere. What these women did was a voluntary action for whatever reason, or perhaps it was a custom, yet not a commandment. All right, this brings us to the new blood covenant passages. So, please come, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 1. Now, there are some other excuses why women say that they cut their hair or they... Uh, wear a piece of cloth on their head. Uh, let's start with verse 1, okay? 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Of course, we know Paul speaking his is, Be ye followers of me, even also as I also am of Mashiach. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. So what's an ordinance? The ordinance uh, uh, is, is like a, a, a tradition or instruction uh, this uh, precepts and it gets into as they were delivered by Moshe and transmitted to the people okay he says keep this word keep gets into obey the ordinances as I delivered them to you we know that Paul spoke nothing contrary to scripture he says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Mashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Mashiach is Elohim. All right, let's examine this. Notice, Yahweh is giving a chain of command here through Apostle Paul. He's just setting a precedent of a chain of command. It's th that simple. That's all he's doing. So we find out who's the head of who. Now he says in verse 4, Every man, male gender, praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. All right, he's established who the headship is. The head of the man is who? Mashiach. 
ladies, this is for us as well. I'm establishing some facts here and some foundation so that when we get a little bit farther down the line, you'll be able to understand certain points that I'm leading to. So, um, this is for you women. All right, every man praying or prophesying having his head covered. Okay, what denotes a man's head, ladies? Okay, that area of the head, the head, both of men and often of animals, all right, that head starts at the bottom of your skull, all right? Your head ends at the bottom of your skull where it meets the neck, all right? This man, however he covers his head, it doesn't say how. It just says every man praying or prophesying having his head covered. Notice that this word covered is not a noun. This is not a person, place, or thing. However he covers his head, it's a dishonor to his head. It doesn't say how. And his head is Mashiach. The next verse. But every woman, female gender, that prayeth or prophesieth with her head, what is her head? Having her head covered. Now her husband is not her head. I mean her husband is not her covering. Her husband is her head. So let's start again. Every woman, female gender, that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. It doesn't say how she uncovers her head, does it? This word uncovered is not covered or unveiled. However you not cover or however you unveil your head. It doesn't say what the covering is. So however she uncovers her head, by the way, again, her husband is not her covering. And a lot of women will use this as an excuse. Well, my husband's my covering. No, he's not. He's your head. He's not your covering. So, however she uncovers her head, she dishonoreth her head, which is her husband. Again, every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, which is her husband, for that is even all as if she were shaven. Now, we've established the fact with the first verses that uh, to be shaven was a disgrace. Because Yahweh told Israel and compared her as a woman to cut off her hair. Alright. However she uncovers her head, it does not say what the covering is. As this word uncovered is not a noun, a person, place, or thing. Okay, so we don't know how yet she dishonors her head, who is her husband. Alright. Next verse. Verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, again, this word covered is not a person, place, or thing. It just simply means to cover up or to veil. It doesn't say a veil or a cover. It says, for if the woman be not covered, however she's not covered, it doesn't say what the covering is. Let her also be shorn. This word shorn means to shear like a sheep. Or cut the hair of the head. So if she's not covered, however she's not covered, whatever the covering is, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame or a dishonor or a disgrace for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered, however you cover your hair. Alright, next verse. It does not say what the covering is at this point. Now, many can surmise and insert a noun there. But there is no noun with the person, place, or thing now. That's what a noun is. That is referring to cover or to not cover. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. However, she's not covered, let her be sheared like a sheep. But if it's a shame or a disgrace for a woman to be shorn, to either cut the hair. Now, shorn is different from shaven. Notice, there's a separation here. But if it, but if it be a shame, this word if is not an option, okay? That means if she is 
if her hair is cut or sheared or shaven, this word shorn is the past tense of shear, which means to cut. Shaven means cut close to the scalp. All right? Either way, both of them are cutting. Snip, trim, cut, whatever. It's a shame, but if it be, this word if here is not your uh is not is not an option again, remember. But if it be a shame, because it's already been established in the prior verses, that if a woman she's not covered, it's a she's dishonoring her head. However, she's not covered. It says, but if it be a shame or a disgrace for a woman to be shorn, if her hair is it don't say hair. It don't say what it is. But if it be a shame I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. All right. Now, this covered is a little bit different. It means to cover up. So, if a woman, if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. So, if a woman doesn't have any hair and she's shorn or shaven, now her head's not covered. Remember. The head is that skull, where the skull meets the neck, all right? From above the neck is the skull. That's your head. He says, let her be covered. Next verse. For a man, male gender, indeed ought not to cover. It does not say what the covering is. It says, ought not to cover. This is not a person, place, or thing. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of Elohim. But the woman is the glory of the man. The woman is the majesty of the man. The woman is the honor of the man. If she's obeying what she's supposed to obey. All right, let's get back here. All right, next verse. It still has not said what the covering is, ladies. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So you women get this in your head. Your husband was not created for you. You were created for your husband. You were a help meet given to your husband. <laughs> if you go looking up some of these words, help meet, you're about your husband's piece of property. That's what it, that's what it boils down to. <laughs> he governs you and he rules you because of the curse. So again, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause, for what cause? Because the woman was created for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Now let's look at this. For this cause, for what cause? Because the woman's of the man, was created for the man. The woman, female gender, ought to have power on her head. She ought to have authority on her head because of the angels. Now her head is her skull, okay? Her head is her skull. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head. You know it's not talking about her husband in this verse. This word head here doesn't refer to her husband. It's talking about her natural head. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. In other words, when a woman comes in the presence of of Yahweh Almighty and those angels are there she has to have some kind of power on her head but what is the covering that gives her power on her head what is it it doesn't say verse 11 nevertheless neither is the man without the woman neither the woman without the man in Adonai for as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of Elohim. All right, here we go, ladies. These are the, uh, these are the uh, censure verses. Are you ready? 
Judge in yourselves. Is it comely? Is it fitting? Is it becoming that a woman pray unto Elohim uncovered? What's the covering? It doesn't say. It has not said what the covering is for all these verses that we have read because there's no commandment to wear a piece of cloth. Now, judge in yourselves. Is it comely? Is it fit? Is it, is it, is it becoming that a woman pray unto Elohim uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man, male gender, have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Okay, what's nature? <laughs> the order of nature. It says, as opposed to what is monstrous, ab- abnormal, and perverse. <laughs> as opposed to what has been produced by the art of man, the natural branches, okay? It gets into nature. The laws of nature. Doth not even nature itself teach you that, now, that if a man, male gender, have long hair, well, how long is long? This word long means to let the hair grow or have long hair. Now, we know that the verses above talk about the man's hair. The, that if the man's head is covered, that it's a shame unto him. So what's the covering? It's getting into it right here. The hair. The long hair. By letting the hair grow, it's a shame unto him. But what about for us? This is a women's broadcast. This is for us. I'm trying to differentiate between what's going on with the man and what's going on to the woman. Because the woman does not want to appear as the man. The woman has a place. She has to abide in. She has to abide in a certain place in Yahweh. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Bingo. Here's the word covering. This is a noun. This is an actual something. It says a throw around or wrapper or a mantle or a veil. But it says her hair. Her what kind of hair? Her let the hair grow. (laughs) The long hair. The one that lets the hair grow. This is her covering. This is her, this word for, the first word for means because. Because her hair is given her, the second word for is a different word for. It means anti. Because her hair is given to her instead of a covering. Okay, I got to stop. If you want to know why your God Mashiach is only named Yahweh, please write to Jerry or Kathy. Our mailing address is 775 McDonald Road. Again, 775 McDonald Road. Covington, Georgia. Covington, Georgia. That's the United States of America, Georgia. Our zip code is 30014. Again, 30014. Or we invite you to call us at 770-784-0703. That number again is 770-784-0703. If you have online access, we encourage you emphatically to go to our website. Uh, It contains all of my husband's televised broadcastings, teaching from a King James Version with the Hebrew Scriptures. All of our radio broadcasts may be uh, listened to as well. Go to Yawa, you must spell it, Y-A-H-W-A-H, with a little hyphen, ministries.org. This is all lowercase letters. That's Yawa, Y-A-H-W-A-H, with a little hyphen, ministries.org. The purpose of my broadcast is to provoke women to study. And this hair thing is a big deal in Yahweh's eyes. You women who think that you could cut, snip, uh, shear, shave your head and damage and destroy what Yahweh ha- that has provided nature to give you, you are dishonoring your head. 
You are dishonoring your head. You are a shame and a disgrace to shear or shave. Until next week at the same time, Shalom.